Seems like men are wearing dresses and purses all over the place in the world. Hollywood and those that are in control of the media wants it to be in your face. This is John Cena, a former pro wrestler turned TV star in a mini skirt with leggings and high heels. This is Shia LaBeouf, completely unrecognizable in a dress for a movie. If you told me that was the same person who played in the Transformers movie, I would not believe it. This is Harry Styles, a world renowned superstar and pop singer in a dress on the cover of some magazine. This is Jaden Smith the son of Will Smith in a dress. And this is a rapper called Aesop Rocky bragging about his female head covering and encouraging all men to do the same. I just wanted to show off my babushka today, honestly, you know, I just, uh, I thought it was just so immaculate. And I feel like I look so handsome right now with these shades on. And I'm just encouraging all guys to wear babushkas from here on out. Silk gang, Silk City, you know how we do it, Gucci. There are multiple wars and battles happening in our society right now. There's the war on gender, there's the war on children, and there's the war on men and masculinity. And those who are still sober-minded are asking what has happened to the real men in our society. We went from having an argument about, you know, what were acceptable sexual practices to to, to then go into an argument about wh who are acceptable marriage partners and, and now to an argument about what is a male and what is a female, what is a man and what is a woman. I think by now you should know that there is a major war on men real biological men. And that war is being fought in a very strategic way that most people do not see it as a war, but more so a remedy to a problem, a way to tip the scale or level the playing field. And the problem is men and the unfairness that men has caused to everyone else in society. And how difficult men have made life for everybody else, especially women, so they say. Now the perpetrators of the war on men usually classify them, and it's funny, as heterosexual white male who are masculine, strong, clear, and level-headed, and who have the ability to lead and procreate. By the way, this is the primary layer of this issue, and we will get the secondary layer later. One of the first shots that was fired in the swall was referring to men or masculinity as toxic. I am sure you have heard of the term toxic masculinity, right? Most major news organizations, most movies, TV shows, and magazines have adopted the term toxic masculinity, which was once confined to women's studies class. When something is toxic, it contaminates everything it touches or that's around it. It pollutes, degrades, and ultimately kills. So when men are being classified as toxic, rather when masculinity has been made toxic or proven to be toxic by the perpetrators of the war, who are advancing their personal agenda might I add, then the next logical move is to put masculinity in a barrel, as it were, with a dangerous sign on it and dispose of it as far away as possible from society. And for the past 10 to 15 years, we have witnessed the disintegration of men or masculinity from our society. Most of the latest movies have male characters who are portrayed to be weaker than a kid. And the notion that men are essentially garbage has been proliferated throughout our society. And with the transgender revolution, men have taken a backseat to drag queens and transsexual who are now leading the fight of gender equality. I should note those are people who wouldn't accept themselves as God created them and demand that society and you and I accept them for who they are or maybe are not, right? Since they control the media, the music industry in Hollywood, so they call the shots on who plays what role and how that role ought to be played and how it should be presented for you on TV. Now, in the case of John Cena, it was kind of shocking to me to see a pro wrestler in a mini skirt with lipstick on, high heels and stockings for a movie wall. What message do you think that sends out to the millions of people who are going to watch that movie? I am not going to watch it. I don't know if you are. I don't advise you watch anything like that whatsoever. What message is this going to send to our young boys who are probably going to think that it's perfectly normal for grown men to cross dress? In today's time, this leaves so much gap that can be easily filled with the filth regarding gender and sexuality. While I was making this video, I presume some people might say, John Henry, you're probably overreacting. Wearing a dress for a movie wall is absolutely nothing at all. But in reality, wearing a dress in Hollywood is a thing. In fact, it is a rite of passage in Hollywood. In order for you as an actor to get to the next level, there are certain things that you must do. And one of these things is to wear the dress. You're an actor as well. Yes, I'm been an in actor. a bunch of movies. Yes. Would you wear a dress? No. Would you? Uh-uh. No? Nah. No. No. As Wanda. And for me, I think a lot of black men have done it. 
out of wanting to get to the next level. Men cross-dressing in Hollywood has been on for a very long time. Many actors, both black and white males, have been made that offer. Those that turn it down usually have a pretty low-profile career as opposed to those that do accept the offer. In today's time, nothing you see on TV should be taken lightly given its demonic ties. The hidden agenda is often painted in comedy in order to propagate their lives. We blindly laugh along, unaware of how accepting we are becoming of their satanic doctrines. Millions of people have watched movies such as Medea, White Chicks, Big Mama, Mrs. Doubtfire, and we have all laughed along. However, when you take away Hollywood's glitter and glam, you are left with drag queens, grown men cross-dressing as women. And the Bible is categorically against us confusing and blurring the lines between male and female. The Deuteronomy 22 verse 5 says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says, So God created men in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So when Hollywood portrays a male as a woman, they are defying God and his word, driving people further away from God. And anyone who participates in this industry of lies is going against God and will not inherit the kingdom of God according to 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. But the most important thing, which is the second layer of this issue, is that we lose all men in the process. If Hollywood is telling masculine male to dress like women in order to play certain movie roles, well then, what is next? This is a war on men and masculinity. Because in this war against manhood and womanhood and marriage, we, there's also the war against the patriarchy. The war against male headship, which again is an assault on the God of the Bible. The woman is made after the man, male headship. The woman is made for the man male headship. The woman is brought to the man, male headship. The woman is named by the man twice, once in chapter two and once in chapter three, male headship. And if that's not enough, when you get to Romans chapter five, the Bible doesn't say sin came into the world through one couple. It says sin came into the world through one man. Why? Male headship and accountability because of male headship. When you see a guy like John Cena in a mini skirt with high heels on and looking almost like a woman dressed inappropriately, totally emasculated for a movie role, Hollywood is saying something. Those that control the media are saying something. That is the future of men. This is the war on men. Masculine men are a threat to society and we must erase them. And the worst part, apart from the fact that Hollywood making a statement, telling us, telling you and I that this is the future of men, John Cena and Shia LaBeouf, they agreed to do that. Can you imagine agreeing to a contract for you to dress almost like a prostitute for a movie role? I mean, that's kind of crazy and insane to me, but that's what they did. I believe many of those people who sell their honor and dignity for fame and money will regret it down the line. And I know some people might say they don't know the truth, they don't understand the truth, but you understand what a male is and what a female is. You understand how a male is supposed to behave and dress and act. And you understand how a female is supposed to behave and dress and act. So there is no question of them not understanding. It is simply a matter of selling your honor and dignity for money. That's all it comes down to. So the perpetrators of the war on men purposefully dress masculine and strong men as females in order to desensitize us. To say that, you know what, it's okay. It's okay for a man to dress like that. It's okay for a man to actually almost be like a woman until we say it's okay for men to become women. That is the war on men and we need to wake up. We need to peel our eyes and see what's happening around us. And I know that as Christians, we usually let the culture move along and we simply focus on the things that are above, but we have to invade the culture 
and preach the gospel to them. Of course, they will hate us. Of course, they will persecute us, ostracize us, imprison us, and even kill us. But that is the task at hand. We are not to preach the gospel when things are convenient. We are not to preach the gospel only when it's all sunshine and rainbows in our country, in our community. We are to preach the gospel when people are hating and persecuting us. And that's what we should do. And that's what we must do. And I encourage you to do that. Because there's a war, a war on our children, a war on gender, a war on men, a war on female, and of course, a war on Christianity, a war on God and the Bible. Are we going to stay silent? No, we are to stand in the town square and preach the gospel and call people to repentance because there's a heaven to gain and a hell to to avoid. This is it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you're not a member of our channel, I invite you to become one. And I also invite you to become a Patreon member to support us and help us spread the word of the gospel of Christ. If this is your first time on the channel, well, thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe. If not, well, I hope to see you in our next video with Loving Christ, John Henry with the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.